Okay. So the second topic is about modeling, which means we create using the 3D or the 2D shapes, whatever we see or whatever we imagine. Okay. But when it comes to modeling in 3D Max, you have two different types of modeling. One, you have the high poly modeling and second one you have is the low poly modeling. So those are the two different types of modeling available in 3D Max. Now what they are, no need to confuse a lot. The simple thing is, See this elephant, even though they didn't apply any color for this elephant, everything looks in detail. So anyone who sees that, they can say this is an elephant. Okay. Now this is high poly modeling, which means taking care each and everything very detailed, even the wrinkles on the eyes, the trunk properly. So those is high poly modeling before applying the material itself. But what is low poly modeling, for example, if I give this human to some movie, nobody will watch the movie. This is low poly modeling, which means creating something look alike. For example, mobile games like Temple Run, Candy Crush. We don't care how the model looks. We just want to play. The focus is on the game because the game cannot accept high poly objects. They can have only low poly objects. Okay. So what they do, they create the model very low resolution like that. Then they place it to the gaming program so that they can easily play it. Otherwise, your mobile will get slower. Okay. But when they watch movies, they need to create everything in detail. Otherwise, no one will watch. Okay. It won't be interesting. Okay. But as an architect and an interior designer, you have to create each and everything in detail. Otherwise, you cannot sell it. Okay. So when someone sees your exterior or an interior, they should not take out some flaws, some mistake. Ah, this, this, no, it cannot happen. No, everything should be accurate and perfectly detailed so that when they build it in real, it should exactly look the same what you created on 3D Max. Okay, so you will be mostly focusing on a high poly modeling. Now the question comes where I can use low poly modeling. Let's say your most focus is on the exterior building. For example, mm, see this one. Your most focus is on the exterior building, but not much focus which is inside the furnitures. Okay, but still you want to show that there are some furnitures inside the room. You can create that local model as a low poly modeling just to save your render time. Okay, or just to save not to make your PC get slower. You can make it low poly modeling because even though I zoomed in too much, I can't see what is inside. But from far away, I can see there is furnitures inside. Okay, so this is how you can use high poly and low poly together to make your object look more realistic, fine. So once you're done with the modeling, the third topic will be about materials and texturing. So what is materials? Applying colors like wall paint, ceiling paint those are all materials any colors that you apply glass or water those are all materials what is texture the tiles the ceiling tiles or for example the leather or the skin those are texture because you are taking a bitmap from somewhere else and you are applying it that is called texturing okay so there are difference between materials and texturing now, when you create texturing, you cannot just download an image from Google and you can apply it. If you do that, it will look totally flat plus non-realistic. So what happens? We have to use one of the software together, which is called Photoshop, to create texture. 
okay so to make it more realistic we will use photoshop to download the bitmap divide him into three images and apply it on 3d max so that you can make him look more and more realistic okay now where we will use this remember i said something about low poly modeling so to make that low poly model make more realistic you can do that this is how you can save your time to make your model more realistic just by creating materials not by making the model high okay so there are different kind of maps which we will go through using the photoshop so we will be using photoshop to do the materials to apply it on 3d max okay and the fourth topic once you're done with the materials and texturing will be lighting now when it comes to light also we have do two different types of lights what are they forget about 3d max in the real world Sunlight and, uh, natural, natural lights and uh, artificial lights this natural lights and artificial light has a common name what is that common name called still can we call him as direct lights why because we know where the source is coming from i can say the source is coming from the tube light or from the projector or from my screen the, the second one is indirect lights can we see the indirect lights in the real world no so what is that indirect light when it falls on my tiles i can see the reflection okay and when somewhere when the light falls for example in your home you have a red carpet and when the light falls on the red carpet you will see the color of the carpet on the wall little bit this we called as color bleeding okay these are all indirect lights if you don't do indirect lights in 3d max you won't get a realistic render okay because in real world it's happening without asking you but in software you have to say to 3d max please do the indirect lights otherwise just by using the direct lights you will still see the room very very dark okay it's because of the indirect light we are getting the room bouncing around the room the lights make it look brighter okay so materials and lights plays a very important role in 3d max fine and the last topic sorry the fifth topic will be about rendering now what is rendering the rendering has the settings of the indirect lights not the lighting the lighting you will do the direct lights in the rendering you will set the indirect lights okay and the final one will be animation so animation means a walk through presentation so to show around your room or interior or exterior with a camera hold it by a human or you know nowadays whenever they present some high rise towers they show some cartoon humans walking around here and there so those kind of animation you can do using the 3d max as well okay before it was tough now the 3d max itself provided you with some cartoon humans automatically animated like they are sitting talking walking so you can just place them and play he will they will start walking okay so those are the six topics sorry not five six topics which we will be going through in the coming five days of classes okay so starting from the first topic can i remove this one yeah so starting from the first topic introduction to 3d max ui now before i do anything the most important thing i have to decide is the units why because all the autodesk software start with the units of imperial units which has the settings according to inches now in the middle east we don't use feet and inches we use metric system okay so first you have to change whether you're going to use millimeters 
centimeters or meters. Now try to use millimeters a lot when you are creating an interior scene so that you can do a lot of details. Okay, but when you are using creating some exterior like shopping mall or some uh, villas, don't use millimeters. You will be typing numbers in thousands. Okay, try to use centimeters or meters. But still, if you want a detail, you can use centimeters better. Okay, so where you can set the units, it's over here. As you can see, the 3D Max is open in front of you. So this is how from the beginning the interface will look like. Exactly the same showing you the four views. To set the units, click here on the customize. And go to the unit setup. In the customize, click on the unit setup. Now, unit setup, when you open 3D Max for the first time, it will be here on the generic units. Right now, you will be seeing it in millimeters because the oldest student, they already changed it. Once you change, don't not to worry, it will be fixed. Okay? So, what happened? Learned not about the one class, but it's about the projector. It's a projector. Yeah. Can you make it one day later? Let's see. Even the Okay, so in the display unit scale, make sure it's choose metric and the unit is set to millimeters. Now this one is saying that only for the display it will be millimeters. But when you create the models, it's opening. the display unit scale is set to millimeters then if you want to create models using millimeters click here on the system unit setup click on the system unit setup and make sure one unit equal to one millimeters so you are working on the full scale one is to one So the most important one is the system unit setup, not the display unit scale. Okay. So the second one is the one which is deciding what units your model is going to be, not the first one. The first one, just for your remembrance that you are creating in millimeters. 
so it will just show behind the numbers mm that's it okay so click ok and ok to finish done okay now once we done with the units the second one is going to be the navigation so there are navigations like pan which is going to be mmb which means middle mouse button so you have to press and hold the middle mouse button so when you press and hold the middle mouse button you can pan all the four views left and right up and down all of them one by one so pan will be press and hold the middle mouse button and just move the mouse the second navigation is gonna be zoom the same mmb but this time you're gonna scroll it all the four views so when you scroll you can zoom in and zoom out each and every view and the third one will be orbit so orbit will be alt plus mmb press and hold but remember you can orbit only the perspective view not other views do not orbit the top front and left only orbit the perspective like alt and middle mouse button just move the mouse so you can orbit him 360 degree don't orbit the top don't orbit the front don't orbit the left just orbit the perspective okay. Okay. We can make it bigger, no problem. Yeah. And uh, Now the fourth one will be maximize and minimize the viewport which means the drawing area which you see on the front, the top front and the perspective. The keyboard shortcut will be Alt W. So when you click here on the perspective view Alt W to maximize it. All W to minimize it. So you can go between one view and four views anytime. This is one view, the perspective. You are seeing only the perspective view, and this is the four views. You are seeing all the four views. Okay. Now, let's say if you don't want to use the keyboard shortcut, which is Alt W, this is the button on the left corner, maximize viewport toggle. So when you click it, it gets maximize and minimize. If you don't want to use the keyboard shortcut. 
if you don't want to use the MMB for pan you will see a symbol of a hand over there click on that hand so now you can pan with the left click mouse itself no need to use the MMB just press escape to come out of the hand uh, what is over there right now uh -huh. <coughs> Which one? Ah, this one, right? Oh, there is no hand over there? Ah, okay. So when you press and hold the hand, normally in 16 you have feet, two feet, like walk through. Okay? But in 17 you have only the hand. Okay? So when you click on the hand, just navigate whatever you want to pan, just press escape to come out of it. What is the walk of the feet? Walk through. If you want to walk through inside the room, you can use the feet. Not from top. Like for example, let's say walk through means let's say you are in the perspective view. Okay, I will show you how exactly it will be. If this is your room, when you use the feet, you will be walking through like that. This is walk through. When you use the feet, but when you use the hand, you are just panning it. But when you are using the feet, it will go like this. Okay. Now, the next navigation will be... Huh? What happened? Okay, the last navigation is called as zoom all to fit. So the keyboard shortcut will be Z on your keyboard. So how exactly it works, for example, let's say I zoomed out too much in my perspective view. Now I lost the grid. So how I can bring the grid in front of me, just press Z. It will come in front of you. Okay. Even if you orbit something like that, Z, it will fix it to the default stage. So, those are the navigations we have. Okay. Okay, the next one will be the user interface itself. Hand notes? I will print this one. Okay. That will be very good. No need to write down. Yeah. No problem. 3DS. Okay. The next one will be the user interface itself. Now, how they are divided into sections. First section you have is this four views. These four views are called as viewport. Or you can also call him as drawing area. 
but the common name is called as viewport. So whenever I say maximize the perspective viewport, so you know where to look for it. This is the one you will be looking for. So what will be the keyboard shortcut? All W will be the keyboard shortcut. Or you will click on that tiny button which is on the corner. So this is the first interface we have. The second one is on the top. You see the edit, tools, group, views. This entire section up to the help menu. This is called as menu. Okay. Now, here, if you see, you have the option of create menu and I have standard primitives and I have box. So I can create 3D or 2D objects from the menu itself or I have another option. Look here, standard primitives and box, the same thing. So this is called as the third one, creation panel. This one on the right side. This is called as creation panel. Now what is the difference between the creation panel and the menu is most of the creating objects are inside here. But the rendering settings, uh, the animation settings, those are not in the creation panel only creating objects, not doing settings. Those are things inside the menu. Okay. So when I say go to the edit menu and use the clone option, you will look for the menu, not the creation panel. When I say create a box, look for the creating a box or creating a teapot or creating a cylinder. Okay. So menu, creation panel. Fine. Now, below the menu, you will see a small arrow key, undo and redo, and some move, rotate, scale. This entire section below the menu is called as shelf. Now, the reason it is called a shelf, because there is no creation element on that. Only modification element, like move, rotate, scale, layers, rendering option snap between endpoints midpoints only those options are available so when i say click on the move tool on the shelf you can easily look below the menu so those are the shelf items we have available because it's arranged properly like a shelf each one of them one by one okay the next one you see here 0 by 100 with two arrow keys. Yeah. So when I press and hold him, I can scrub him here and there. Now this one is called as time slider because we can slide him. Now this one is used for animation. Okay. So you can set a time limit from 0 to something, let's say 10, and you can move it. You are not working by time here in 3D Max. You are working by frames. Like in the olden days in the Disney movies, the flip book. So when you draw in 24 pages, the animation will be proper. Otherwise, it will be really fast or really slow. So the common frame is... 24 frame per second is a proper animation. So if you are moving a box from one place to another, so the starting should be 0, the ending should be 24. Then the animation will be smooth. Otherwise, you will see it is in a slow motion mode. You see in some movies, people jumping in a very slow, exploding in a very slow. It's because the frames are longer. You will see the fast for when you in the VCR we had the fast forward is because the frames are shorter. Okay, that's how it the 3D Max works. Fine. And you see here 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. Those are called as 
frame rates. So you will be using that to set your frames. That's it. Nothing much. But when you do the animation, you will see a small marker like, you know, saying that ah, you did some animation just to understand till when to when you did the animation. Okay. The next one you see here X, Y and Z. This is called as coordinates. Now this is the mostly used in 3D Max if you are moving or rotating an object with a proper dimension. So if you make a box and you want to move 100 millimeters far away from the object, just type 100 on the X or on the Y or on the Z axis. Okay. In CAD we always have two X and Y. In 3D Max we have X, Y and Z axis. Three dimensional option. Okay. The eighth one <coughs> here, a plus sign with the key, auto key and set key. For you in 2016, you will not see a plus sign, you will see a big key. Okay. This is another difference in 17 and 16, but it does the same job. Okay. This is called as animation controls. Okay, so in default you have two animation auto key and set key. Don't worry about it. We will come later how they do. Okay, this one you see that like a VCR you have a play button, fast forward, rewind. That is called as playback controls. So if you want to play the animation that you've done in the viewport. You will click on the play button, you will see it's moving. And the last one on the corner will be called as navigation controls, which we did with the mouse, the middle mouse button, the orbit. So everything is over here, the same, pan, orbit, maximizing and minimizing the viewport. Okay. Or you, when you keep on working on 3D Max, you will use the mouse a lot instead of clicking on that icons. Okay. One thing is, sorry. Let me save this one. Okay. One thing is, you see this creation panel. In default, when you open 3D Max for the first time, it will have only one panel. The reason is you want to see your viewport a little bit bigger. But you can make number of panels. See? Okay. So at least you can keep two panels. Because sometimes when you use a tool, there is a huge list. So you can keep two or one. By just pressing and holding the left click and dragging right and left. So it will increase and decrease the panels. Okay. So. Any question? Okay. Now, what is poly? I was talking about something called high polygon and low polygon, right? Now, what is that poly? What, why that word came? Now, for example, no need to do this one. Let's say I'm creating this teapot. Okay. You see this one box? This is considered as one polygon in 3D Max. Okay. So the polygon should be always in a shape of a cubicle, a box, quad. It should not be a triangulate. Okay. If it is a triangulate, those are called as mesh. Okay, mostly triangulate are used for games, polygons are used for movies and other interior and architecture designs. Okay, now if you look close to this teapot, you see the edges are not soft, even the lid is not properly smoothened out, having lots of quad. It's because it's just a look alike of a teapot. Now, if I want to know how many polygons they use to create this teapot, I will press number 7 on my keyboard. 
So the keyboard shortcut is 7 to know the polygon rates for objects. So here when you see on the left corner, look at my PC, it says 1024 polygons are used to create this teapot. Now, when I reduce the polygons, that's my low poly teapot. Now nobody will say this is a teapot. It looks very ugly. How many polygons? 64 polygons. And when I increase it, now the teapot looks very good. Very smooth, perfectly molded. But how many polygons? 87,616 polygons. Okay. So when you increase number of segments, you are increasing number of polygons to make your object look more high, more realistic, more smooth. Okay. So the more you increase the polygons, the slower the PC will be. The rendering will be slower and if you don't have a very good PC it might even crash okay so keep the polygon rate to a limit but make sure your model is realistic okay no need to make this model no problem now any question now let's start with creating objects so let's work together so the first object we're going to create is a box with a dimension now before we do anything i know you would have played with the viewport so let's bring it to the default stage now if you zoom in zoom out or if you created something okay how you can make it to the default stage click here on that 3d max logo which says three on the left corner on the top and click reset if anything says uh, you want to save just say don't save if you it will ask do you really want to reset click yes now everything will be neat like a clean page now what I want to do I want to maximize one of my viewports so I will click on the perspective and I will say Alt W to maximize the viewport. Now once I press Alt W here in the creation panel under the geometry this sphere is called as geometry. So whenever you see a geometry you will see only 3D objects. Okay. So under the geometry under the standard primitives click on the box just one click no need to take your mouse to the drawing area okay so once you click on the box look at the menu on the bottom you will have three options sorry four name and color creation method <coughs> keyboard entry and parameters those are the four options available. Forget about parameters. Parameters is only to modify the shape, not to create the shape. Okay? You will get the parameters again, but you will not get the keyboard entry and the creation method again. Okay? So I want to mention the length, width and height of the box and where exactly it has to sit. Now when you create objects in 3D Max, See this black line? Those are the major grid lines. Okay? So now when I create a box in the origin, which is 0, 0, 0, the box will be exactly here. So it will be like this. So if I give a dimension of 50 millimeters, so 25 here, 25 here. Same goes here as well. Okay, the center of the box falls on the center of the grid. Even if you create a cylinder 
exactly the same, the radius. Okay? So every object has a point. That point is called as pivot. Pivot point. Okay? So all the pivot point of that object is on the center, which you can change it later on. Okay? Normally, in a door in your house, what is the pivot point of the door? Will it be on the center or on the corners? On the corners. That, that is pivot. In, in another meaning, we call it as hinge. Okay? Hinge is the corner of the door. That is the reason you can open it like that. If it is on center, it will twist like this. Okay? So, objects are in the center. Right now, everything is on the center. Okay? So, click on the... Ah. Uh -huh. The same, minus plus, exactly the same. Okay, click on the plus sign near the keyboard entry. Click on the plus sign near the keyboard entry. So, here on the length, type 50, on the width, type 50, on the height, type 50. Now, to create a box, click on the create button. So, click on the create. Now, still... If I keep on clicking the create, you can keep on creating more boxes on top of each other. Because still I'm in the drawing mode. So how to come out of the drawing mode? Press escape twice on your keyboard. Why twice? Escape twice, just to be on the safer side. But escape once is enough. The only thing you should make sure that nothing is shining here. That's it. Done? Okay, now there is the box we created exactly sitting on the center, everything is fine. Okay, now Alt W to minimize the view. Alt W to minimize the view. Now look at the four views, look at the top. Look at the front and look at the perspective. Okay. Now, how exactly it works? For example, this is the box. Okay. I made it on the perspective view. So, right now the object is like this. Now, in the top, exactly the same. In the front, like that. In the left, like this okay so right now I started with the perspective but remember when you create some interior or exterior scene try to work on all the four views see only on the perspective because in the perspective you cannot draw in an accurate place or move in an accurate place okay so focus on four views once you get to know more about 3d max okay fine you can work on perspective not a problem okay now, other views, I am seeing it on a two-dimensional mode. In my perspective, I am seeing him as a shaded mode or a 3D mode. So, how I can see it on the perspective also as 2D mode, like 2D lines. So, the keyboard shortcut is F3 on your keyboard. Press F3 
on your keyboard. So F3 for wireframe mode. Press F3 for wireframe. What Any problem? It's fine. Huh? Okay. Number of? Just press 7. It will. Yeah, 12 sides. Inside and outside. Calculating both. Huh? Seven, this one, not this one. Yeah, like I said, when you press seven, don't press seven on the new blocks. It doesn't work. Okay. F3 again to bring him back. So F3 to on and off the wireframe mode. It works for all the four views. Okay, not only for the perspective view. Even in the top view, when you press F3, it becomes shaded like that. And when you press F3 again, it comes to wireframe. But normally, we should see on the top front as 2D. Okay. Now, what I want to do, I want to divide this box. I created a box like that. So I want to divide it equally, 25 by 25. Okay. Now, when I want to divide, this line is called as segments. So this is the one which is increasing your polygons. Okay. So how you can create segments? Click on the box. It should say here on the name and color, box 001. Huh? Click on the box. Just click on it. Huh? Okay, fine. Then, near the plus sign, click here on the modification panel. Click on the modification panel. Remember I said something about parameters? There what the parameters is on that modify. Okay? Now, that is the length, width and height I mentioned. The 50, 50 and 50. Okay? And here you have segments, segments and segments. Okay? Just make it 2 on the length segments, 2 on the width segments, and 2 on the height segments. And just click anywhere on the drawing area to deselect the object. Now, I did create it the segments, but I couldn't see it. Press F3, you will see it. And look at the polygon number. It got increased from 12 to 48. Okay. F3 again to bring it back. Oh, I think it's all, all seeking to the next Yes. Now, how I can see him in the shader also? I want to see on the 3D also the segments. Press F4 on your screen. So when you press F4, you will see the division of the boxes. Select him, you will see him in color white. Okay, so that is in materials. Yes. Yes. Layers and layers, you cannot separate the colors. In materials, you can separate the colors. This is right now one object, but you divide him into different parts. If you want to break it, you can break it, but still it's grouped now. Okay. So what is F4? F4 means. We can call it two names. One, you can call it as segment mode or you can call in a 3D Max name edged faces mode. 
So F4 to switch on and off the segment mode. Okay. Now let's say I want to change the height. So I'm going to change the height from 50 to 25 and I will press enter. So it will change the height of my box. Done. It's not separate boxes. This is one box with segments. But when you apply materials, you can make it individual. Yes. Done? Okay. Now, creation is done. Now, let's say using the modification commands. So, we have only three modification commands here. One of them will be move. Second one will be rotate. Third one will be scale. Okay. Now, the keyboard shortcut for them will be move will be W. Rotate will be E. Scale will be R. Now, the reason they given is, look at the keyboards, the W, E, R and together, all in one fingertips. Okay. Let me save this one. Okay. Now, how exactly we can know that we are in move or we are in rotate or we are in scale? If you don't want to use the keyboard shortcut, that is move. When you click on this button, you will go to select and move. So that's how the move gizmo or the shape will look like. When you click on the rotate, that's how it will look like. When you click on the scale, that's how it will look like. In 3D Max, you don't really have to scale because you have the parameters to change the length, width and height. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you scale, uh, what happens? The length, width, and height will be remain as 50 millimeters, but for the viewport, it will scale look like bigger. Yes. Okay, so click on the select and move and keep an eye on your coordinates. Click on the select and move and look at your coordinates on the bottom. It says X, Y and Z axis as 0, 0 and 0. Now I want to move on the X axis 50 millimeters. So I will just type 50 and I will press enter. I will just type 50 and I will press enter. Now if I want to bring him back to 0, I can type 0 or you see that tiny arrow keys, just right click on him, it will automatically go to 0. Just right click on him to go back to zero. Done? Yes.
one is 10. Now, uh, grid size that each each box is 10 millimeters. Okay. Now, click here on the rotate, the second button. Now, I want to rotate him in the Y axis, let's say 45. So, I will type on the Y 45, press enter. So, it will rotate my box 45 degree. So, why is it different? Yeah. Now, if you want to back to zero, just you will do it the same. Right click to bring it back. Yes, the same. Yeah, this is different. Done? Click on the select and move again to finish it. So, you make sure you are always on the move tool, not on the scale or rotate. Done. Now, the next one is using the copy option. So, how you can copy the objects? Now, two ways you can do. The first way will be like this. Okay, so my object is selected. I clicked on select and move button. Okay, press and hold the shift key on your keyboard. Don't leave the shift. Press and hold it. Then take the cursor close to that X arrow. Don't keep it on the center. Close to that arrow, the red arrow. Click and drag it out. Just pull it out like that. Leave the shift and leave the click. So you will get this menu saying clone options. Keep the option as copy. Don't keep instance or reference for now. Just keep it as copy. Number of copies are required is 2, 3 and 4. Let's say I need 4 copies and click OK. So he will make 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. same distance till what you have put. Done? Oh, yeah. no. So let's say I want to undo what I had done. Press Control Z on your keyboard to undo what you had done. So, the keyboard shortcut for undo is going to be Control Z on your keyboard for undo and Control Y on your keyboard for redo. Done. Now, in default, when you open 3D Max for the first time, the number of undos you can do is only 20. But you can increase up to the maximum of 500. Okay? But before creating any object, you have to do this. Not after creating. So, where exactly you can do that? It's over here. Go to the application menu. and click here on the options. Here, scene undo. The oldest student, they already changed it. So here, in default, it will be 20, okay? So you can make it 500. So that's the maximum. Click OK to finish. So now it's fixed to 500 undoes. Application menu. 
options. In the scene undo, you have to change. Now, when you made that copy, you press shift and you pulled it, right? And we didn't know how much distance we have provided. As I can see over here, it has a number something like 57, sorry, 57, something like that. Now, what I want to do, I want to make copies with a proper distance. So how I can do that, select that box and click here on the tools menu. Click here on the tools menu and choose array. Select the box, click on the tools menu and choose array. So once you click on the array, so this is how the option comes up. Too many numbers, no need to confuse. Just make the type of object as copy. This is that same thing when you did with the shift. Number of copies I want is 4. And in the x-axis, the first one is actually the move, okay? The second one is rotate and scale, so don't worry about this one. So in the x-axis on the move, type 55 and just click OK. So he will copy four objects with a proper dimension. Same option. Same option. Tools are in. Yes. From the last, you will create one more. One plus three equal to four. But here properly, uh, sorry, in array one plus three and another one five. the same in the y you will type 55 and it will go on the y direction mm. how you want to bring it back so for example i delete this one yes yeah, select that and just press delete that's it Say again. No. No, like AR enter. No, it doesn't work. Not too many shortcuts. Little shortcuts. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is let's say Control Z on your keyboard to undo so that we can have only one box. So the next topic will be about, let's say, understanding about instance, which we say instance copy and reference copy. We had two more on the option, right? Instance and reference. So what exactly they are. Let's see it. Now what I'm going to do is... I'm going to select the box. I will press and hold the shift key on my keyboard and I will make one object like that saying copy. Click OK. Again, I will make one more saying instance and click OK. And from here, the first object, I will make one more on the left side as reference. So, one copy, one instance, one reference. Good? So, we know this one is copy, this one is instance, this one is reference. These twos are copy, right? So, I'm selecting my main object. 
and when I increase my length you will see my reference changing so what exactly is happening this is the parent this is the child so whatever you do with the parent the child works this is my instance right when I in change it you see my copy and instance are working together when I do the same thing with this copy the instance work together so in the instance both of them are child sorry both of them are parent so whatever you do with the instance the parent will do whatever you do with the uh, copy the instance will do vice versa but in the ref uh, not, in the not in the reference because no the reason is I made copy I made instance from this one if I would have made from this one a reference let me delete one two let's this is the main one right let me delete this one and this one not to get confused so this is the parent this is the instant this is the reference now when I change it all three will change but when I change my instance the copy and the instance will work and the reference see how it is focusing okay so parent and parent child so when you make an instance copy both of them will be parent when you make a reference copy parent and child okay so that's how it works so let's go to the application menu reset when it asks for the saving don't save and click yes any question till here no anyone okay take a short break 10 minutes see continue again let me post stop this